A reading from the book of Isaiah. <clears throat> the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord, and a day of vindic vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul. For he has clothed me with a robe of salvation, and has wrapped me in a mantle of justice, like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants, and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise springing up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to him forever. Hello, dear ones and twos and threes and fours and fives and all of you out there watching. Father Francis with you on this third Sunday in the Holy Season of Advent, the Sunday known as Gaudete Sunday, the Sunday of rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. So, uh, so we're back out here again in the in the in the in the back forty. <laughs> uh, I'm outstanding in my field. Yeah. So today, uh, again, as we talk about the quality of rejoicing, uh, and you think about you know when you say a celebrated an anniversary or a wedding or a um, a baptism or someone's maybe a confirmation, you know, all these things. You know, a lot of times you see you know, presented beautiful uh, things, you know, uh, maybe it could be a, sil a new silver cross or a beautiful rosary, um, you know, uh, something along those lines, something that's made out of precious metals. Um, and, and this, the readings today kind of uh, talk to us about uh, as we grow in holiness and righteousness, when you're putting on the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, then yes, you know, there's going to be um, this really beautiful uh, sparkling quality, I guess, to our lives. You know, um, God's going to take us and if we allow him, he's going to shine us up and really make us really brilliant. OK, um, a couple weeks ago, one of our dear parishioners um, uh, took it upon herself to uh, restore uh, one of our tabernacles in our tabernacle in our day chapel and it had kind of a tarnish patina on it for a number of years ever since i've been here and after some other little uh, improvements that she brought to the sanctuary uh, some staining of some pedestals that we have our angels on you know um, and also this the tabernacle stand that this person kind of said maybe maybe what I could do is even try and polish the, the tabernacle. And uh, so I said, yeah, let's give it a try. And so as a result, uh, we weren't prepared for the absolute beauty uh, that this uh, person brought to the restoration of our tabernacle. I mean, it's just absolutely uh, glorious. And when the afternoon sun, you know, comes pouring down into the, the windows in the chapel, it you know, it hits this beautiful tabernacle and it just, you know, uh, it, uh, it just uh, shatters all the, the sun, the sun rays are scattered and these beautiful sun rays are just all over the, 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 uh, the chapel now. So it's a beautiful time to go in during the middle of the day when the sun's out and, and it's, la and it's uh, shining brilliantly on this beautifully restored tabernacle and it just scatters, you know, the, 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 the uh, chapel with light shards, you know, just beautiful. And in many ways, that's what we're called to, to be. We're supposed to be reflecting God's, you know, Shekinah glory, if you will. Uh, and, and it goes out to the world to, to announce that this great power is now amongst us. Okay? Um, a couple weeks ago, I had somebody who was very upset because I had said something about the alphabet community was basically involved in perversions. And you have to understand that anything outside, you know, God's design for human sexuality is perversion. It's a perversion is a is a is an unnatural twisting of something that's good. 
Um, and, and this person really got very upset and angry. And uh, so I just thought, well, okay, some people can hear the good news and some people can't. Um, you know, again, there's the thing called invincible ignorance where you are prevented uh, from understanding uh, the truth. And it's a sad place to be. And, and I think a lot of people that are trapped in whether it's addictions of alcohol, drugs, or, or sexual addictions, you know, those things blind us from seeing the truth. You know, um, unfortunately, uh, God has made uh, the pleasure <laughs> uh, parts of our bodies to be pretty powerful, you know, and, and I guess that there's a reason for that. But when those pleasure centers are now kind of been um, hijacked by perversions, they can become very, very insidious. And the only way you help people is try to, one, tell them the truth, try to live the truth, and try to be a source of that truth when they're ready to hear it, okay? Because, you know, a lot of people, when they're trapped in addictions, the last thing they want to hear is, you know, that you can be set free. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, being a recovering alky, I can tell you that, you know, although there were times that I, I knew that my life was pretty messed up as a result of my drinking, uh, it was hard to let go of that, of that, that alcohol. You know, I loved it so much. Um, there was a case when I was first ordained, uh, and it's true, it's a sad thing, but it's, and it's just real, you know. I remember secretly drinking every afternoon and early evening uh, when I was first ordained. Uh, again, I'm not proud of that, but, but that's the reality. But I remember on many occasions I'd be called to the hospital and most of the time, it was before I started drinking, so I was still relatively sober. And I remember going in and visiting this man, and he was, uh, I was 35 at the time, and he was 34, and he was in the ICU, and he had just gotten through um, coughing up a lot of blood. I guess when you're, uh, and he was, a, he was a recovering alcoholic, and what happens is, I guess, that the, um, when the liver begins to shut down, the blood begins to pool in the, I guess, the, the arteries in your esophagus. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really that well versed in uh, human anatomy, but I think that are the veins. Maybe there's obviously veins that are in the esophagus and they, they, they get engorged with blood. And when they rupture, they, they spew out all this blood. And he had just had one of those episodes and he was, uh, he was uh, unconscious. And he was basically, he was in the last moments, last hours of life. And so I remember I, I anointed him. And when they told me that he was uh, 34 years old, I said, my gosh, the guy's young, a year younger than I am. And he's dying of this thing. You know, sobering moment to be sure. But I wasn't ready to quit at that time. But it was a, it was a marker. It was a marker in my recovery. But I re remembered how challenging that was, thinking this could be you someday if you don't stop. So I remember going into the waiting room to talk to his family and there's about a 13 year old boy and he was kind of sitting off looking out the window and but I could tell that he was just filled with a lot of anger. He was, his whole body was just super just rigid and tense and I tried to you know engage with him and finally he just said you know what he told me he finally just, you know, he finally decided he was going to talk to me. And he whips around and he goes, you know what my dad told me? And I said, uh, no, what did he tell you? He said he loved it too much to quit. Yeah. And, but the good news is that Jesus Christ wants to bring freedom and liberation to those of us who were trapped in our addictions. And he can. He can set you free. He can set us all free if we if we so choose. All we have to do is surrender. You know, I know a lot of people think, well, you know, I can't help being this way. This is the way I was born. You know, no, I can I can tell you that's not true. You can be set free even from the alphabet community. Okay, and there's lots of uh, people who uh, have declared their freedom and have been healed and have been restored and go on to lead, you know, normal lives. You know, it's sad because uh, in our day and age, we don't want to hear that good news. A lot of people don't want to hear it. 
Um, just like there's alcoholic, uh, Alcoholics Anonymous, for those who are trapped in the addiction of alcohol, there's uh, NA, Narcotics Anonymous, for those who are trapped in the uh, addictions of drugs, there's Overeaters Anonymous, there's Gamblers Anonymous, there's Sex Addiction Anonymous, but isn't it interesting that uh, the people in the alphabet community uh, flatly have made it almost a crime to talk about conversion therapy, okay? They have basically shut the door on recovery for themselves, and that's, that's a sad thing, okay? Because, they, 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 again, they love it too much to let it go. And I just hope that if anybody does hear this and you're angry, ask yourself why, you know? Why are you angry, you know? Um, that's, a, that's a good place to start. And I don't know why you're angry if you are and watching this and you're angry, but you have to ask yourself, why are you angry? Okay? So anyway, um, but a good, the good news is from Isaiah is that uh, the Lord has come to bring the, the news, the message of salvation, liberation, and freedom. And, and so that's why we rejoice on this Gaudete Sunday. Well, again, thank you for watching. May God bless you today and every day. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.